There we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the, this Monday segment of Family Law Uncorked. Again, I'm Jen Bordeaux, the Director of Public Relations with New Direction Family Law. And this afternoon, I am joined by Ms. Leslie Dories of Foundations Coaching. She is a marriage um, consultant and coach here in the local Triangle area in Cary, correct? Yes. Okay. So um, as you've noticed, we've been bringing all kinds of different topics to you via Zoom and Facebook Live because we are in front of our computers more than ever these days <laughs> with everything going on with COVID-19. So today we wanted to focus on, we, we talked a lot about co-parenting, we talked about custody, we talked about child support. So today we wanted to focus on marriage and relationships, which is why we brought in Leslie. Thank you so much for joining me today, Leslie. Well, thanks for having me on. Yes, this is a crazy time for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So there's been a lot of you know, joking about, you know, whenever all this is over, there's either going to be a baby boom or a divorce spike and maybe both. Who knows? I think um, it's probably going to be both. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we just kind of want to talk about the different dynamic that this is bringing to relationships and marriages. Um, you know, people are working from home more than ever. They, we are confined to our houses and, you know, expected to be parents and teachers. Um, and then also we get to learn about our spouses or significant others and how they are as a full-time coworker, basically, maybe which is with a different business. So wanted to touch on a few of those things and get your thoughts and advice um, on couples that are facing, um, you know, all of this, this newfound time together during this public health crisis. Um, there was an article that one of the attorneys that I work with stumbled upon that kind of they gave some great insight or just things to talk about. And so that's what I want to kind of just revolve around, um, starting with that, you know, even relationships that are, you know, very happy and stable and under normal circumstances are, are great and good to go are, are going to, you know, come up against some challenges, new challenges with, with COVID-19. Can you expand on that? Why is that? <laughs> well, it's, it's sort of like this whole thing is putting a magnifying glass on people. And the things that we usually can do to alleviate anxiety or stress are pretty much taken away. I mean, gyms are closed, restaurants are closed, bars are closed. I still love that, that um, the liquor stores are considered essential businesses. Yeah, you got that right. Um, because, and this is very, this is a very stressful time. Um, human beings do not like uncertainty and we are in the middle of uncertainty. And how we individually handle it is gonna come to the forefront. And, um, people don't view the same situation the same way. We have different risk tolerances. And when we have outside ways of dealing with that stress, it's a whole lot easier. But now we, we, we're not supposed to go anywhere. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard. We can't go you know, hang out with the girlfriends or go shoot hoops with the guys. And we can't, it, it's, it's really hard just to even be with somebody who isn't in your own home. I mean, obviously we have this wonderful technology, which thank goodness we do, but it's still, you know, but, but we now have so much on our plates too. If you're a parent, if you've got kids in school, you have to monitor, you, usually you just put them on the school bus and off they go. <laughs> you know, now you're actually the one having to be around teaching them. Same thing with work. Normally, we just go off to our respective places of work. We do all that, and you know, you know, or and even cooking. A lot of people don't cook, so now it's like, well, what do you do? And so everybody's life has been upended, and. It's a, great, it's a great opportunity to learn more about ourselves and our partner, but it's also challenging to do so with this, you know, with, with this magnifying glass, that's the only thing I can call it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think um, aside, you know, the relationships between parents and kids and that stress, like you said, is just amplifying, you know, with that magnifying glass of, okay, we've got all these other stressors. So now also we're going to take those out on the person close to us that we're now confined to, you know, pretty much 24 um, seven. Well, and this is a case of where, you know, if somebody has a completely different view of the situation, either they think it's a lot worse than it is, or they think it's not a big deal, um, or even how you want to handle it is 
um, you know, is just makes it different. And I may not understand why you look at it this way. And so this is why I say this is a really good opportunity as well to say, well, where does this come from? Um, you know, what experience have, do you have in the past? Um, you know, and, and and people have very different ideas about how safe or unsafe their children are. I mean, and of course that, <laughs> you know, or I can't get to my parents or I can't get to my sibling or, you know, and it's, it's just, it's just really hard. And we have this, human beings again, have this desire to understand. And sometimes I don't have to understand why my partner feels this way about it. I just need to accept that they do. And then we work from there. But a lot of times what happens is, is we need to explain this in a way that I understand, otherwise it's not real. And that's where some of the, some of the tension is gonna come from. Yeah. Quick thing, just just to interject real quick um, for audio purposes. I don't know if there's something around where the mic is associated with whatever device you're using, but it, there's some of your movements is like a ruffling sound. I don't know if paper's hitting it or closing or. <laughs> um, yeah, so looking at the, the, the way the seeing different lenses. So your, your advice there, just so I'm, I'm hearing clearly is if you know, once if, if husband's looking at it like, oh, this isn't a big deal. And then wife is over here freaking out, you know, obsessed with the news. That's a good time to dig a little bit deeper as to why is this, what's the underlying, like, why is this bothering you so much? Let's, let's dissect this a little bit more instead of just saying, well, you're crazy. This isn't that big of a deal kind of thing. Well, and it's, and it's important to, you know, and I think it's important anytime there's a difference of opinion between couples because you know, we all don't look at things the same way. No matter how close we are, we have different experiences, we have different perceptions. And when we put it into, you have to validate your feelings to me in order for them to be considered real, that's gonna create some huge problems. Just really, really huge problems. Because you know, what we're dealing with right now is survival and survival skills are not logical. They are based completely in emotion. And so when you try to put a logical spin on it, um, it, it doesn't mean that there isn't a place for logic, but the first place we have to start is with the underlying emotion. Yeah, which, you know, this is maybe a great time for that because we've got more time on our hands now. <laughs> Yes. Um, so we always hear, you know, a really good foundation or key to um, every relationship, whether it's a marriage with children, with friends, whatever, family, coworkers, um, that communication is key. So during these times, um, you know, is there, I mean, is that more important than ever now or should communication styles be looked at? differently or you know what advice would you give around communicating because obviously there's a lot of opportunity to communicate but you know how do we do that without <laughs> just oh, yelling without or speaking a, and yeah. communicating that way right <laughs> um yes communication is critical but productive communication not unproductive or harmful communication and it's really hard right now because every you know people's anxiety is up and you know there is sort of that idea of, you know, we all, we don't necessarily treat the people closest to us the best. And this is a case when we really, really need to. And it's, so it's, it's not just communicating, but it's how you communicate. And this is a really good time to learn good communication skills. And the first one being is if you are upset, do not open your mouth. <laughs> Which is easier said than done, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, it's you know, there, it's that whole count to ten. You know, take a deep breath. Um, you know, that whole thing because, again, when we're emotional, we're not logical. We don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and you know, and it and it becomes very difficult to to be heard because you know, the more emotional we are, the easier it is for the other person to dismiss us. But, you know, that's just, that's just ridiculous as opposed to being able to go a little bit deeper and figuring it out. Um, and, you know, a, a friend of mine put up a Facebook post a while back about, you know, realizing how important being nice 
is right now. Being nice, being polite, being kind. Um, because that's, you know, it's, we're in close quarters there. We can't go away. Yes, we can leave the room. Yes, we can go outside, which I highly recommend if you're, if you're feeling stressed and you're feeling annoyed with your partner because you're going to get under each other's skin. Mm -hmm. But it's really important to be as calm as you can be. And again, eliminate the word you, unless it's, I love you. You're wonderful. Thank you. But you know, it's like, you, know, you did this, you always, you never, you're not helping. You is a, is a word that we really want to pay close attention to not using. It's more like, I'm feeling really stressed right now. Can we do this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think like I've been saying uh, clean, not mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> During these yes. times to be clean, not mean. So, you know, and that's a whole nother level of stress. I and mean, we, we, you know, we keep on saying that we're, everyone's under a different level of stress right now. And stress obviously affects people very differently. And we'll, we'll talk some more about that here in a moment. Um, but, you know, then let's add that of everything needs to be wiped down all the time. The kids' toys need to be wiped down. The countertops need to be wiped down. Like, oh no, did you just sneeze? What's going on? You know, so it's just everyone's heightened in that stress. And so being, reactive in that sense is just it's, it's a much easy much easier trigger nowadays or, or during this this particular climate um so you, you mentioned you know that if you are feeling aggravated or stressed or you know annoyed by what your partner is doing don't open your mouth um so that kind of lends itself to everyone needs their their own space so what you know tips or advice would you offer for embracing your own space without really having that much space to embrace and you mentioned going outside which is, is and now that the weather's you know getting nicer and the pollen's starting to decrease a little bit that's a much better option or more you know practical option um but what else would you say there as far as getting your own space Does that mean you actually have to you know go somewhere or what do you think well, I, I mean i do think that, it, that it's one thing that will be helpful is to set up different areas of the house, however big your, however big the space is, so that my office is over here, your office is over there, the kids' school is here, you know, and so be very clear about the space. So if I'm in my office and I'm doing something, it would be exactly like I was away and you can't see me. Right. So maybe you need to text me or call me. Um, that, you know, and to, so that we each have our own space. And here's something that's really, really critical right now. Um, those of us who are introverts are handling this a whole heck of a lot better than people who are extroverts. Extroverts, um, present and accounted for. <laughs> yeah, and I'm an introvert. Thank goodness my husband's also an introvert. So, you know, we aren't struggling with this quite as much. And so for people who get their energy from interacting with other people, it's going to be a challenge how you deal with this. And part of this is, is just being upfront about it to say, hey, let's have lunch together. Um, and we said, you know, and or let's, you know, have some, some specific time where we can be together um, so that both of us are aware that this is when we're going to come together and be connected. Um, and you know, it, it is kind of a challenge because we do have these personality differences and, you know, some, some people don't really like being by themselves and other people, it's like, oh, please, I'm, I'm in heaven right now because nobody's bugging me. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's really becoming aware of what you need and being able to ask for it calmly and negotiating what that would look like. So if I need time for myself, you know, I can't check out completely, um, especially if there are children, because it's like, you know, trying to decide, okay, who, who is going to deal with the child at this particular point when in, in our normal lives, the kids are at school, you're at work, I'm at work, we're all in our own little world. Right. Now we have to be willing to negotiate um, who does what, who's available when, um, how much time do we each need to be alone? Yeah, and I think um, a couple of things there too. We just did a um, 
Friday, we had our a Facebook Live. We had a yoga teacher come in and talk about meditation and how just taking a few minutes to yourself, you know, quietly or walking meditation, you know, going outside, going for a walk, you know, whether it's listening to the sounds of nature around you and just really noticing that, you know, quieting your mind and being mindful um, or, you know, popping in your earbuds and listening to some music or a podcast or whatever that just helps you decompress um, and unplug from whatever situation is starting to produce that anxiety um, or aggravation. Um, and so I think, you know, going back to, I like what you said about identifying space in the house, because in order to have your own space, you've got to create that own space, your, that, that space. So, you know, this room is reserved, you know, this is the kids room. This is their stuff where they can play, where they can have their own time, you know, the community space, the living room, whatever it may be, whatever works for each individual family. And to the other side of that and recognizing that everyone needs their own space, everyone, I don't care who it is, even the kids need to take time to themselves, you know. Um, so if you're the person who is hopefully communicating and asking for that space, then the, the other, you know, parent or spouse, significant other, not taking it personally, not saying like, oh, they got to get, they just want to get away from me. You know what I mean? Like taking that time to really try, because it's hard not to take things personally, especially whenever it's someone you care about and they're saying, you know, and I know a lot of it is all in the delivery, right? Of how you say things, of how we interpret them. But it can be hard not to, you know, say, oh, well, you just want to get away from me or you just don't feel like dealing with the kids, you know? So, um, well, and, and this is why it's important to be able to negotiate what it is um, so that <clears throat> nobody feels like it's personal and everybody, everybody is getting as many of their needs met as possible it's you know we're going to have to be a little flexible on this and so you know i may want to spend three hours a day with you and you might only be able to say yeah i can only handle you know that for an hour and a half um you know concentrated time not you know uh, and so it, it's it's really the ability to negotiate yeah yeah definitely um we <laughs> i for one am a big fan of humor uh, so that's one silver lining that has come out of all of this is there's been some great memes and just stuff floating around on social media for everyone's entertainment. One of those things related to the subject at hand is, you know, spouses or, you know, partners are now living, you know, working a lot of the times at, from home together. I've had some friends of mine that have even talked about this. I didn't know that they were married to such a corporate person or, you know, whatever, we're holding these meetings. Um, so, you know, we've seen the things going around about one way to help make light of, you know, or bring some humor and lightness into situations that may be annoying you by constantly living at home and working from home with your partner are, um, there was one about making up an imaginary coworker and blaming, you know, the dishes in the sink, you know, that got, that get left during the day or that, that that coworker is doing it, um, or sharing stories about how you had no idea about this work personality that your spouse had. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think that, that that's good for, for spouses or couples to be able to do that? Um, or is it just pushing the issue away? <laughs> well, it, it can actually be both. So part of it is, is anything, of course, that allows um, the immediate tension to be relieved. So I love, you know, you create this coworker and it's like, wow, you know. But here's the deal. Both people have to agree that it's funny. Yeah. And there still needs to be a solution, you know, because I mean, because we all know, we all are familiar with the coworker who leaves a mess and never um, participates in cleaning up. So mm -hmm. that kind, we don't want that kind, we don't want to create that kind of coworker in our house. Right. <laughs> you know, um, you know and, and be, I mean, the idea of the coworker is actually talking about not taking things personally because I can say something and I can blame the, the, the co-worker and then my partner goes oh this is something that actually I need to pay attention to but it's not you're leaving the dishes in the sink but you know gosh that Cheryl she's really you know she's just really not very considerate um and that and that allows for oh this is something that is potentially problematic um and so I need to be aware that I'm doing this so that I don't put extra work on my partner, but we're kind of having a, a fun thing. And, and, and people, again, have to be honest with themselves about 
Um, is this really something serious that we need to negotiate to get through these times without real creating lasting problems? Or is this something that we can just kind of laugh about because I'm actually taking care of it later? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I guess it's a tool, like you said, for both of having a little fun, but also maybe being able to <laughs> work on some, some underlying I, I, underlying issues and discuss those things. So um, during this time, I've heard multiple people say we've expressed it when we have our team meetings for the office, you know, of, of establishing routines and keeping up some sort of routine, whether that's getting up and making your bed every day still or showering every day or, you know, some sort of fitness, whether it's walking, running, whatever it is, to have some sort of routine. Um, and so with, again, just these uncharted territories that we're all in right now, would, I mean, with routines with the relationship as far as, you know, still establishing routine bedtimes for the kids at this time and dinner time and everything, would you say that that's a, a very a necessary and important component for couples right now to, again, to help keep some sanity in their relationship? Absolutely. Human beings like routine. Our bodies like routine. Um, you know, getting up at the same time of the day, exercising at the same time, having meals at the same time. Um, unfortunately, I, you know, my husband actually did get the virus. And so for a couple of weeks, our life was just completely upended. And I didn't know what day it was. I mean, I was still working, but I didn't know what day it was. I wasn't exercising because this was before the gyms closed down. And, you know, and it was really very disruptive. And since, you know, since it's kind of gone back to like, oh, we're getting up at the same time we used to get up and I'm still exercising at the same time. And we're, you know, we're not staying up late or I'm not, you know, having, we're not having to do the weird stuff that we did when he was sick. And kids, especially if you've got children, they thrive on routine and, and everybody does a little bit better. Um, and, and that's the same thing. Now, we may not be able to do the exact same routine because obviously we've got more stuff we've got to do, but, but you know, we can say, okay, I'm going to be in the office, you know, from seven, in, you know, my, I normally get to the office at 730. So I'm going to be in the office from 730 until lunchtime, you know, and then that just helps, it, it, it helps give that certainty in this uncertain time that's like, the, it gives us something to be in control of, in charge of. I can set my routine. I can set the family's routine. And so then it relieves just some of that anxiety over the unknown. Now, yeah, and, and as you were talking about, as you were saying, you know, getting up and so being in the office at this time, or, and even with, especially with kids, now that there's a lot being put on parents as far as homeschooling, tying everything in together with the needing me time and being able to communicate I you know it sounds like a routine would just really support those things so if you have this routine of okay you know what then at this time you're going to be assisting or helping you know our child or children with this block of of coursework that needs to happen or we're both going to be part of it at this time so you know, you can build in that me time that can be part of the routine. And as you're going through that, it gives you something to look forward to, you know, like, okay, I just got to make it through the office for a couple hours, do an hour of schoolwork, and then I get some me time and a breather, you know, so um, that just that really the routine can really kind of help support all those other things we've been talking about to help mm -hmm. <laughs> couples and, and, you know, and, and spouses and everything through all this. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I do appreciate you joining us, but um, a couple of things I wanted to touch on that, you, that um, directly relate to you, especially just given what you said, are, you know, your spouse, which I did not know, was tested positive for the virus. So how did that affect you guys as a unit in, in the household? You know, I mean, did you just have to stay away from him for however long or what? Because that can add another component to it. Well, it did, and, but I'm living proof that social distancing works because I did not get it. Now, um, so he had his, I mean, luckily we had a big enough house where he had his own bedroom, his own bathroom. I didn't, you know, he was, we didn't see each other, it's, you know, very much at all, which was actually a little disturbing because, you know, we were living in the same house, but, but couldn't be in the same room and really didn't spend much time talking. Um, and one of the worst parts about it was when he was experiencing his worst symptoms, I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't see him. That was actually the worst part. 
but um you know and it and it, and it did kind of dis- it, it definitely did disconnect us a little bit and yeah. so we're now working back to that because it was just you know for two weeks well yeah for, for about two weeks we just were kind of doing this you know kind of he's over yeah. here I'm, you know we're kind of doing this number and high five know, and across the room <laughs> yeah it's like hey how you doing today you know and, yeah and, you yeah know, he would text me from upstairs going can you get my lunch ready you know and and so that was you know and that was fine I mean I didn't have any issues with with you know, he was sick there wasn't anything he could do but it, you know and one of the things that I really hated was depending on other people to go to the grocery store for it because I couldn't leave my and I was on the quarantine as well so yeah yeah definitely it was a little challenging but yeah doable yeah sounds like it and I think um one of the you know we mentioned earlier either a baby boom or skyrocketing divorce rates maybe both so looking back more specifically at the baby boom people were spending a lot of time in close quarters together um which might you know, people might think like, oh, great opportunity to reconnect. And maybe there'll be some, some increased sexual activity going on, you know, in a relationship. Um, but do you think that that alone, either that pressure or that thought could cause rifts, you know, because stress affects so much and, you know, and obviously men and women, as you well know, and you can talk about in length mm-hmm. are wired very differently. And so if you do have a spouse or a partner that is, um, you know, maybe wanting to, or not want to say forcing the issue, but, you know, is, is more, is talking about sex more, trying to initiate more. Um, can that cause some tension or some rifts in the relationship? And how do, how does a couple work around that and, and you know, deal with that? Well, it certainly can. And one of the things is that, that sex is great because it releases oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. It also releases stress, which of course is great for right now, but also, you know, but, but stress, high levels of stress are not exactly conducive to relaxation, high libido. They're not aphrodisiacs by any means. (laughs) Yeah, not usually. And so again, this is a case where People are going to be different and they need to be able to talk about it. And again, if you've got, if you've got kids around the house, you, you know, it's like, you don't have kids, then, you know, take, lunchtime doesn't have to be a meal. Lunchtime can be, you know, a sexual yeah. encounter. Um, but if you've got kids then, and that are constantly underfoot, then that's not exactly conducive to romance and intimacy. And, you know, people are tired. So it, it, this is really a case of, again, talking about what can happen versus what, quote unquote, should happen. Mm. Um, we want to stay away from that should word. Um, and again, being able to connect during this time as opposed to it's like okay we're you know just turn it on because for women we, generally speaking we can't just turn it just on turn it on yeah <laughs> um and so and, and again you know that's that's something else about you know make making time for that making sure that there is time for intimacy not just sex but emotional intimacy intellectual intimacy Physical, because if you do those other things, the physical intimacy will be there. But, you know, again, it's being aware. And, and by the way, letting people talk about their feelings, their fears around this, whatever, that's connection. That's mm-hmm. intimacy. That's, I'm sharing, you know, and if, and if you're hearing me, and if you're not forcing me to explain myself, but if you're just accepting me, wow, I want to talk about a turn on, that's it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great point, um, is, you know, connection and that vulnerability, being feeling safe to be vulnerable, um, which is what we all hope for in a partner, right? Being able to do that. Um, maybe not if your partner has tested positive for COVID-19, you're going to have to have some space and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some, so maybe some connection via Zoom from room to room. Um, so I think all of this goes to, sh- to, to say that, you know, during this time and, you know, this increased amount of time that everyone is spending together, if different issues are going to be uncovered or opportunities to focus on uh, maybe things that have just kind of been put to the wayside because we're all so busy all the time, this could be a great opportunity to seek therapy, not as a, 
we need a whole lot of help. We're really struggling, which if that's the case, then absolutely as well, but also as just a tool to completely strengthen um, a relationship during a very turbulent time for, you know, everyone. So, um, and that's where you can definitely come in as a marriage coach. Um, are you still operating, you know, via telehealth, doing teleconferences and everything for couples and individuals? Yeah, Zoom is my friend. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and one of the things right now, and, and I'm actually putting together like a three, a, a three week mini course on productive communication, because okay. that's, because that's going to be the key. I mean, and, and, um, one of the things is, you know, and again, I'm all for people getting better at these skills and not necessarily waiting until things are so horrible. And, you know, and, and this can right now highlight, wow, I thought we were doing better in this area and we're really not. And the, the advantage of a third person is, of course, I'm not emotionally involved in this. Right. And, it, it, and it enables me to, to see both sides to help people understand each other and to actually help them learn how to communicate in much better ways so that whatever other issues they have, they'll be able to resolve them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I hope, um, I know some friends and family members that are still continuing with either, you know, or just getting started. I mean, I think it's a great time. We've got, like I said, all this extra time to be able to focus on ourselves and our families and our loved ones. Um, and so it's a really great time to start thinking of that as a, as a tool and a resource not only to deal with, help deal with the stress and digest the stress of what's going on in the world right now, but, you know, also just to, like I said, help strengthen that, you know, partnership or the, you know, the family unit as a whole. So I think that's great. Thank you for continuing to offer your services. Um, and just speaking of your services, do you always just meet with couples or can you meet with individuals in a, in a relationship as well? <laughs> I, I actually do both. Um, because one, one person getting the information and implementing it will change the system. So, um, you know, it, it goes a little bit faster if I have both people, but, but one person on their own can definitely do that. Um, because if I start, if, because again, if I start learning to communicate with you more productively, the flip side is going to happen. And by the way, learning how to communicate productively is great if you're a parent and you're wanting to deal with your kids. There you go. So what is the, with, with, you know, right now, what is the best way for people to get in contact with you if they are interested in services? Probably the best way would either be to shoot me an email at Leslie, L-E-S-L-I, please don't put an E on it. Thank you, mom. L-E-S-L-I. <laughs> at foundationscoachingnc.com that's f-o-u-n-d-a-t-i-o-n-s coaching n as in nancy c as in charlie.com or you can reach me by phone at area code 919-924-0463 perfect and i will add that here in the comments to our chat so that people have that information directly here with with the video um as this will live on our facebook page beyond us being live so um, thank you so much for joining us today and to share your insight and help couples stay strong and stay sane and clean. Yeah, de <laughs> definitely. We all need to stay sane right now. Stay yeah, right now. for sure. So any final or, you know, thoughts to wrap things up or anything before we, before we end the session for today? Well, the one thing that, that I, I really want to emphasize for people in times of stress, you really need to, to make sure you're taking care of yourself. And that's something that we like to throw by the wayside. Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. And that's actually, this is actually a really good time to examine our priorities, to see all those things that we've been doing. Do they still serve us? Do we still want to do them? Um, or do we want to shift and, and reprioritize our time, our energy? And one of those things may be, you know, I've been talking recently about, um, you know, resetting your marriage. It's like, what's working? Great. Let's keep it up. But if there's some other things that maybe you want to be changing up, now's the time to do it. Yeah. And I just had another thought, too, of, of a way um, that would be a really good time for people to reach out to you. Is, you know, unfortunately, there's been a lot of engaged couples that have had to cancel wedding plans um, yeah. and wedding dates and everything because of, you know, everything. So 
that's probably going to put some strain on their relationship as well. And I know that you really enjoy working with couples that are, you know, on that track of marriage or are engaged um, to be married. And so this might be a good opportunity to take a step back and say, hey, maybe this is something that we should look into um, before we, you know, since it's got pushed back to just, again, just strengthen that unit. Um, and like you said, look at what's working, maybe what hasn't been working, fears or uncertainties going into marriage or the relationship. And because uh, with these stressors, I'm sure things are popping up between couples that maybe they didn't really see before or didn't know that it bothered them or whatever the case may be. So um, I really hope that people, that couples and, and partnerships that they, they take the opportunity and hopefully reach out to you um, and other resources, as well as everyone, like you said, just to take care of themselves and realize what's serving them and what's not and use it just to have a stronger, better future trajectory whenever all of this madness and craziness ends and we can go back to what we feel was normal but may not feel as normal after we get to the other side of this. So um, thank you so much, Leslie, for joining me today. Again, I will put your contact information in the comments here so that people can easily access it. And um, yeah, stay safe. I'm glad to hear that your husband's better and we will talk to you soon. Well, thanks so much, Jen, and you too. You stay safe too. Thank you. Bye.